Thank you. It's, it's hard to get the last name right, so thank you. That was, that was perfect. So, and thank you all for, for joining. It's really a, a pleasure for me to be here with you and to introduce you to SEMA, and I think it's quite appropriate to, to follow the, the wonderful presentation from Biosite because we, too, are, are, are totally laser-focused on, on diabetes and think cell therapy is really going to be one of the things that transforms this, uh, this treatment. So is there a button here to advance the slides? The green arrow. Ah. Perfect. Okay. So our, our vision, as you can see here, is, is to really change the way uh, diabetic patients, and in particular type 1 diabetic patients, are, are treated and managed. And I think most of you in the audience, like most of us at SEMA, are, are impacted in some way with a friend or a family member who's uh, um, affected by this disease and, and it needs no explanation what an impact that has on patients and families. And so our mission is really to use uh, the technology that we've been developing and, and licensed out of Harvard uh, to, to bring forward stem cell directly islets as a therapy for, for type 1 and ultimately type 2 diabetes. So diabetes is, is really a disease in, in, in both cases of the pancreatic beta cells, which will reside in the, in the islet, a very specialized mini organ within the pancreas. And in type 1 diabetes, those beta cells, which typically respond to uh, the glucose changes in your blood sugar when you eat a hamburger or a donut, and secrete insulin to tell your, your other tissues to take up that sugar and make use of it, those cells are actually destroyed by the immune system. And so in that disease, you end up in a situation where in the absence of an exogenously uh, injected insulin, the patient can't control their own metabolism. And so there's a very clear cellular deficit in that disease. In type 2 diabetes, the complications are often a uh, result of, of peripheral insulin resistance where your peripheral tissues don't actually respond to insulin the way it should, and so that makes the beta cells over time work harder and harder and harder, and that often leads to beta cell destruction in that disease as well and, and insulin uh, dependence, insulin injection dependence in, in type 2 uh, patients as well. And so our, our solution is really to focus on that final differentiated cell type that's missing in, in both of these diseases in a large fraction of patients, and that's the beta cell that resides in this specialized island. And so uh, the last talk talked a little bit about uh, the process of going from a pluripotent stem cell, which has the capacity in theory to turn into any cell type into the body, into pancreatic progenitors, which we're representing here um, that look like a little uh, green ball. And so our focus has really been to, to, to build on, on that that development and on the, those programs, and to really make uh, uh, fully differentiated pancreatic islets that contain cells that are functional. So to do this whole process in a petri dish of going from a pluripotent stem cell into a functional stem cell derived islet or a functional beta cell that secretes insulin. And so that was really the, the technology that we uh, first brought into SEMA and uh, licensed from, from our group in, in Doug Melton's lab at Harvard. And we've also recognized, as, as, as I think everyone in the field of cell therapy, that, that the, how you deliver these cells really matters, the route of administration, how you protect them from destruction of the immune system. And so we are, are equally focused on, on the cell biology and cell therapy development component as on our uh, delivery uh, component, which I'll talk about more as I, as I go through. So this is a, just a brief uh, summary of, of, of the paper that we published a couple of years ago, and this is the technology that, that underpins uh, SEMA Therapeutics. It's, it's based on work done by Doug Melton, who's a professor at Harvard Stem Cell Institute, where I was previously with a number of colleagues, Jeff Millman and others. Um, and it's really been Doug's life mission to, to transform the way type 1 diabetes is treated, and he uh, unfortunately, it was, it was very closely affected by type 1 when both of his young children were diagnosed with this disease, and he uh, reoriented all of his, his academic research towards finding a cure for this disease, and, and we're really um, honored to, to be a part of translating that work out of the academic lab and, and, and soon into uh, product development and clinical development. So this is an example of, of this type of uh, assays we use to evaluate the cells that we make in a dish. I won't go through any of the process or process development of actually making the cells, but I'll just show you one of the key assays that we use, which really looks at the activity or the potency of the cells that we make in a dish. And I think it's one of the big advantages that we have of making a fully differentiated, fully functional cell product is that it really uh, allows you to match the assays you're using in vitro during your manufacturing development and regulatory development with the expected mechanism of action. And in this case, the mechanism of action we expect for these cells is their ability 
to sense the amount of glucose or, or sugar in a certain media or in the bloodstream and respond appropriately with insulin secretion. And so in this assay, you can see here, we have uh, cells basically in a, in a small vial that are challenged with either low glucose, which is the white bar, or high glucose, which is the dark gray bar. And as you would expect with a normal pancreatic islet, you can see, uh, see higher levels of insulin secretion when the cells sense that you're getting rising levels of, 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 of sugar in the media. And so we had uh, established a proof of concept that we could do this uh, in the lab uh, in, in 2014 and have moved this into SEMA. And this is, this is work from, from George and Poe and other folks in our, in our development team at SEMA of really enhancing this protocol. And this is one of the examples of showing how we can improve uh, the potency of the, of the islets that we're actually making with this, with this kind of approach. So we've spent a lot of time in uh, transitioning the technology and making it robust and reproducible but also much more pure, much more potent, much more active, and I think that's critical now as we move uh, into our preclinical studies. So one of the other uh key features of, of any kind of, of pancreatic islet or beta cell therapy is not only do you want to have insulin secreted when the blood sugars are rising, but you also want to make sure that that, that insulin uh, secretion machinery is controlled enough so that when your blood sugar drops, that the insulin secretion machinery turns off as well. And that's one of the key um, safety concerns of, of all patients and clinicians dealing with type 1 diabetes. And so this is a, a slide to demonstrate that, in fact, we can actually demonstrate that working in vivo or in vitro with our cells. And so again, the white bar is, is exposure to low glucose for, for a period of time and then sequentially exposed to high glucose and then back to low glucose. And you can see that the cells that we've made in a dish are actually able to uh, sense and, 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 and regulate their insulin secretion in response to glucose levels, which is exactly what we need them to do. This is a picture of what these actually look like. We're now doing this at larger and larger scales, which is, again, one of our key focus as we move from, from uh, you know, research to, to really product development. So this is large-scale production of, of very small, very pure um, islet cell clusters. You can see in green the cells, whoops, sorry, I'll go back one. You can see in green the, uh, the cells that are expressing insulin. In red is a stain for basically all the hormone-producing cells uh, in an islet, and so those are where uh, cells like the alpha cells and delta cells, which provide counter-regulatory signals for met metabolic control, reside. And so we're, we're working very closely on, on uh, making this uh, a clinically suitable process with clinical reagents and GMP cell lines and whatnot. So obviously, uh, I think all of you in the audience know the, the ultimate goal of the scientific community is to cure mice of all diseases. And so that's, <laughs> SEMA is doing our part. Um, this is an example of, of transplantation of, of those cells that you saw in vitro transplanted into, into mice. And what I hope you can see is that much like you saw in the last slide, there are really large numbers of, of beta cells, which are marked here in red, expressing insulin or, or C-peptide, which is a small fragment of insulin. And then in green, you're seeing cells expressing glucagon, which is, again, the, the key counter-regulatory hormone to insulin that, that, that really fine-tunes uh, blood glucose control in patients. And so you can see this is out six months with, with some uh, semi-derived cells, and, and the cells are very, um, very viable and, and very functional uh, here as well. So this is an example of a functional assay that we perform in vivo, again, looking to see in a fasting condition where you've just woken up, haven't had anything to eat, are you getting low levels of insulin secretion as you should? And in fact, you do. That's the blue bar. And if you then go and eat something, or in our case, inject the mice with glucose, do you see a stimulation uh, that's related to, to, to that influx of, of glucose into the system? And so now the challenge for, for us and for, 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 for everyone in the field is how do you move from, from that uh, preclinical uh, kind of studies and development into an actual product that can move into clinical development? And we've thought about this in a couple of different ways and are actually pursuing a couple of different approaches to it. I've talked to you primarily about the SCI-LIT development work that's ongoing, and, and, and we're uh, delighted to be working with, with uh, key manufacturers to get that uh, to the next stage. But we recognize 
emphasize again that this delivery challenge is really, really key. And so we have an entire uh, um, component of SEMA, which I'll talk about in the next slide, focused on device development led by Chris Thanos and his colleagues. And so our, our primary goal is to, to move forward eventually into uh, clinical commercial development with a SEMA proprietary device and SCILET uh, combination product into IND. We're also really interested in, in third-party devices and have a number of uh, relationships with third-party devices, but I think um, uh, there's tremendous challenges in the device space, and ultimately it will be a combination of innovations from our own team and externally that, that solve a lot of the challenges of fibrosis and vascularization and whatnot for, for a device-based approach. And of course, the third option, which which uh, Vice I spoke about um, uh, just before, is is obviously to use this kind of cell product as a replacement for cadaveric islets. There's an enormous amount of, of clinical proof of concept that if you can replace these cells into patients, you can have a tremendous impact on their lives, and in, in majority of cases now actually achieve insulin independence with replacement and immunosuppression. So it's a very um, clear potential path. The second path I, I want to mention uh, just briefly is, is an approach that uh, sort of uh, circumvents that delivery challenge altogether, at least for some forms of diabetes, and that's an autologous approach that makes use of, of the new induced pluripotent stem cell technology so we can actually take a sample of, of blood or skin from a particular patient with diabetes, turn it into what's called an induced pluripotent stem cell that then feeds directly into our manufacturing process that we've established for the allogeneic program or the off-the-shelf cell, cell product program. So we're delighted to have uh, the support of, of CIRM here in California to be moving forward with that program with UCLA and Cedars and, uh, and City of Hope um, and focused first on a, on a type 2 diabetic population that's, that's very insulin sensitive. We also have a uh, East Coast uh, uh, autologous program ongoing as well, focused in pancreatectomy. So we think this gives us uh, a really unique uh, angle into proving in the clinic that the cells are actually able to perform the type of activities that we expect them to based on, again, that clinical proof of concept from, from cadaveric islet transplantation. So I only have one slide on our, on our device engineering team. We acquired a company called Cytosolve about a year ago now from uh, out of Providence, Rhode Island, uh, again led by Chris Thanos and Moses Goddard. And I have to say they're, they're some of the most impressive uh, bioengineers I've, I've ever met. And um, I think they have, have done tremendous work in the last year with us working really hand in hand in tight collaboration with our cell biology team to design and, and specifically design around the parameters that the cells need uh, a type of device uh, that will work for transplantation of stem cell derived islets and so we have a number of, of prototypes now two of which are our lead candidates um, that that really have some very innovative configurations and membranes that that support uh, the islet survival post transplantation in ways that certainly I haven't seen, seen before in the encapsulation field so we're extremely excited about this and I think hopefully next year you'll you'll hear a lot more about where we are in the, in that program so this is, uh, this is a snapshot of our, of our team, uh, led by, by Robert Millman, our, our CEO, and one of the founders of the company. Chris, as I mentioned, is, is one to highlight who leads our, our delivery work and, uh, and leads really the device design and transplantation studies. Walter, who's our head of manufacturing, comes out of the antibody uh, manufacturing field and has a tremendous experience in product development and, and moving forward into the next phases of our development. Moses and Jason, Jason on the clinical side, both in experimental surgery and in immunology, things that we, and in endocrinology, things we know are going to be um, key challenges and key components of our development path going forward. And Jeff, who comes to us from, from Novartis and, and keeps the ship, ship running in an operations role. So our scientific advisory board as well uh, is chaired by, by Dove, obviously, who's uh, the founder of SEMA and um, uh, has really recruited a lot of the, the luminaries in the, in the diabetes field to, to guide our development, and we're, we're really grateful to have um, their expertise and advice, and in many cases, their collaboration with, uh, with Peter on the CIRM grant and Gordon in the autologous program, and, and we've had a number of, of other collaborations between um, people in their institutions uh, as well that's been tremendous. For, for helping us move our product forward to, to the next stages of development. 
So in summary, I'll, I'll just say that, it, that I think we, we, we have the biological and, and engineering expertise uh, to make this treatment a reality for patients, and, and that's really our mandate and our mission. I think to date we've, we've really been able to develop a very uh, efficient process of, of generating these, these types of fully differentiated uh, islet-like clusters, transfer that process now to commercial cell manufacturer, Lonzo, who's been terrific working with us in scale-up and, and moving forward uh, in our clinical manufacturing uh, planning. We've developed, as I said, multiple device prototypes that, that I think are quite, quite interesting and, and really give me a lot of hope that we'll be able to do something that's pretty new in the, in the device transplantation uh, field, first for diabetes and then potentially ultimately for, for other cell therapy uh, delivery challenges as well. So we've now really tra transitioned completely to, to clinical product development. We're a preclinical stage company um, and, and eager to, to, to take the next step um, into treating patients. And so have initiated our, our, our combination product testing now to, to establish the proof of concept we need to go into INDs. And so we think about uh, every day, I think everyone on our team thinks about uh, what success means to us, and, and I think it's all driven by what patients need and want and deserve, and, and that's really a, a new option. So with that, I'll, I'll leave uh, the last slide some of our key partners and, and supporters. We're, we're really grateful to our investors for, for buying into the vision and, and having the, uh, the audacity to hope that we can really transform diabetes. So thank you. I'll take questions outside.